<clears throat> Hello, my dear friends, best greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I'm a research entomologist, beekeeper and teacher. I'm studying small parasitic wasps, tiny small parasitic wasps of size of 0.5 millimeters up to 1 millimeter, and they're very beneficial for biological control of agricultural pests. They're spread all around the world and they're indicated here on this poster. So because they're very small here, they're very big. So rather big like small dog, maybe a small cat, but in reality, they're very small. And the insects, majority of insects, pretty small, they're flying around of us like plankton, like aquatic plankton flying in air and they're invisible. But today I will do them visible because I will show some insects on screen some original videos and some videos which I got kindly from my Japanese colleague, Dr. Kazuo Takagi. And this video will be pretty surprising because these insects are very small, five millimeters, one millimeter, half of a millimeter, and you have never seen them because they're living somewhere between the grass, somewhere on flowers, somewhere just on the earth. So pretty invisible because for majority of people, insects, this is something dangerous, something unusual and something irritating. Majority of people, they're just common people, they're saying, what about these flies? Just kill it. Just what about this bee? Just kill it. What about this beetle? Just crash it. And this is education just for majority of parents to destroy all animals, small animals, small beetles, small bugs, small spiders, just to crash all of them, only just some devoted just some intelligent educated it's not the level parents can teach their kids that they may be they must be very careful about nature around they can take care about beetles about bugs about dragonflies about larvae about worms not necessary to crash beetle to crash worm to crash snail everyone to crash no 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 just better to save them because they're living in their natural world and these tiny parasitoids they make it they're very deeply organized very sophisticated way of life and they're adapted they're evolutionary adapted to their host because there are some insects and some arthropods they're like hosts like the meal and there are some tiny wasps which are just parasitizing on their meal laying eggs inside host or on the body of host and larvae of parasitic wasps developing on the body of their host or inside the body of their host and host can be egg larva pupa or nymph or sometimes even adult insects so what's about insects? The majority of insects, as I said, small, but some of them were quite big. And people enjoy them very much. People say beetles are the best insects in the world, or some others say butterflies are the best. And of course, if you watch for them somewhere in such a wonderful atlas like this about coppers, you can find so many interesting pictures here inside like this. Strange with this very big beetle, Titanos, the biggest beetle in the world. 12 centimeters is not the smallest, not the biggest one. 17 centimeters, 170 millimeters can be the biggest. All these beetles are so beautiful. Tropical species are the most beautiful, especially in this group of scarabidi beetles. So these scarab beetles these funny choppers beetles that's absolutely amazing especially this with horns so they're absolutely wonderful or oh, this one with this one it's with flattened body hiding somewhere just under the bark or under the leaves somewhere in malaysia absolutely wonderful and some commercial entomologists and commercial sailors dealers just catching them in big numbers for sale Better to enjoy them on a photograph inside with the book or somewhere in social media or at least in some zoos. 
So again, this wonderful Goliath, so big. I showed you some Beatles in, in contrast, contrast to these tiny parasitoids. For sure, all these beetles, they have also parasitoids, but they are unstudied because it's so difficult to study parasitoids. It needs to study larvae of these beetles. And larvae is absolutely maybe unknown for this type of curculanida beetle because people can collect adults of these beetles, but have never seen the larvae. Even the plant, which is used as a host plant for these wonderful weevils, in many cases unknown and it needs a very careful very attentive observations long time observations for years for months in natural conditions in nature in natural environment just to take picture of a dead insect that's one idea but to take photo and video in natural environment it's absolutely different so because here they are just taken these photos in the museum or oh, like this wonderful beetles eating the wood so so shiny so hairy so shining like a gold of course these beetles are very attractive but if you can compare them with parasitoids some parasitoids even some smallest of them they are also very shiny, like this one, of a family, Eurytamida, very unusual one, Chrysaida, so shining like a bee, like a Chrysidida bee, like cuckoo bee, cuckoo bee. And what I show you is just beetle to compare them with wonderful parasites and to show the parasites not less colorful, not less wonderful than the same bees, beetles. And this again, weasels, weasels. For sure, the tropical relations of all these beetles not very well studied. The majority of them just the objects of collections, objects of photographing. The tropical relations, as I said, difficult to study in the natural conditions. Some again. The Lateridae and some of this wonderful Bupristidae that I showed you before. Where is here? Oh, here more. Some Cerambicidae. This was Longhorn beetles. Longhorn beetles. Yes, this Bupristidae. So shiny. Majority. Tropical areas again. Look on the beetles. Look on the stag beetles. So long, with long horns. Scarabidae beetles. And wonderful. Look on us. Look on the beetles. Well, and let's start now to show some videos. Not only photos. For videos, I have a collection of Entomophagus insects. Entomophagus beetles and other insects beetles some beetles are predaceous carnivores by feeding on other objects by feeding on other insects and some larvae eating different arthropods and first not only beetles but also many flies are predaceous carnivores and we start from the first video which we have here in my collection Okay, here we see bugs. Bugs. And these are predaceous carnivorous bugs that just suck in the prey, suck in the caterpillar. See, just using the long rostrum on the head, two antennae from both sides, <coughs> and between this part of rostrum, like a tube. Tube is inserted inside the prey. And bug is sucking, sucking gradually, step by step, the hemolymph, the content of the prey for their food, because this is his meal, the caterpillar. 
not only bars, <coughs> but many Lavio different insects <coughs> are using other insects for their food for their meal. You see here, the larva probably of lacewing, just making cocoon, but this is predaceous larva, which are feeding on some small mites, small thrips, just on the surface, on uh, the down part of the leaves. Caterpillars. Caterpillars are phytophagous, but larvae of beetles, like this one, are predaceous. Some of them are predaceous for lace wings as well, predaceous on other insects or even on mites. So you see here, this is larva, even you can see just inside the body, the stomach, a digestive system, which is just pumping, pumping inside inside the larva, pumping the digestive system, and on the top, just very small crawling mite, red mite, phytophagous mite, which is feeding on the juice, on the liquid from the plant. And you see larva is, can be active and can just catch this active mite as well. Who is the next? Who is the next in our collection? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I delete some and you know, we'll add some more. Some more insects coming to our collection. And this is a beetle, beetle, a ladybug beetle, predaceous ladybug beetle, predaceous, which is just running, 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 running around, searching for prey, searching for food, because this is coccinellida beetle, coccinellida beetle, which is predaceous and searching for small larvae or sucking insects which are usually sitting or hiding somewhere on the surface of plants, on the surface of leaves. And so to find them needs to be very active, running around, crawling around. And so the beetle does this way around the leaf in search of its prey. Next one, next one, this is a larva. Yes, this is a larva which is just sitting here on the leaf, you know what she is doing. This is a larva of flower, flower fly or syrphidae fly. Syrphidae fly, which is sitting together near with some coccids and some sucking insects, because larva is active. You see, we've had part is just moving, moving, moving. We will see larva is trans semi-transparent, semi, -transparent, semi yellow, yellow, yellowish, whitish, and this is a pupa already, puparium. Again, you see here, for pupation, Laura doesn't escape too much because she's very soft, very good prey for ants. So that's why it's easy way just to pupate immediately on near its host. Host is very safe, aphids or some scales, second scales, and then just Laura is making pup pupa inside the shell, which is named puparium, which is named puparium. And again, next predaceous insect, this is a fly of a family, tachinidae, tachina fly, tachinidae fly. What she is doing? She is already not predaceous, but she has a larva, which is predaceous, because tachina fly has a very specific not only coloration, but cetation, hetation. It's covered with setae all around. So if you can see very hairy, hairy fly, probably it can be tachinid, which is not biting you, which is not biting animals, but just searching for prey, for larva, for caterpillar, for larva of beetle, or for caterpillar of night moth, lay eggs inside the larva, and maybe even larva can pupate, made pupa like here on this previous small you see here this is a pupa and pupa is not alive anymore pupa is dying because inside this pupa was a larva of this tiny parasitoid parasit parasitic fly of a family tachinidae 
So pupa of moth just died, and just from pupa emerged the adult of this fly of a family Tachinidae. In many cases, Tachinidae also feeding on caterpillars, and just caterpillar is dying. But here, caterpillar just was able to pupate, so but still not survived because inside this caterpillar and later pupa was parasitized, infested by this strange predator, strange parasitoid to be precise, strange parasitoid tahina fly. Yes, and who is the next? The next is coming. Next is coming. And here again, again, on the right side, this is a la predaceous larval fly, Sirfidi fly. Sirfidi fly was similar with same flower fly, which is sitting and just prey as a predator, trying to eat very tiny, sucking aphid. Aphid is phytophagous animal, phytophagous insect, eating, feeding on juice of plant and cannot survive when larva of sirfidi fly is coming because larva is predaceous will damage this very soft body of aphid on the right side is also is another aphid sucking insect with green greenish yellowish color and this yellow or brownish color larva in the center this is not a caterpillar this is a larva of predaceous fly of a family Syrphidae. And again, next one, next predaceous insect. This is insect which is, looks like a small mantis, like a praying mantis. Yes, you see, but mantis with very special, like transparent wings, very unusual, but very change, changed first pair of legs because this is not a mantis, it looks like a mantis with same adaptation, same adaptation. This is family Raphidioptera, Raphidioptera. Uh, it's not a family order, special order like a Diptera, the order Hymenoptera, and this is order Raphidioptera, Raphidioptera, more like a mantis fly. So it's not brain mantis, but mantis fly with transparent wings, very close, in shape, the winds like in some neuroptera. This is not a mantis, but you see adaptation for catching the prey with first legs, the same leg with mantis, taking using the legs to catch the prey. And this interesting insect is predaceous or carnivorous. So these are insects and after insects, I want to show you, maybe you can write some questions, but if nobody is asking questions, today is the weekend, so I would like to show you some landscapes of Kiev, the Dnieper River. And just to change the subject. Yes, and here this is a Russian park. Good morning to Tara Shevchenko. This is wonderful Ukrainian music. Here, this is a Vidubichi. Vidubichi Monastery. Bridge to the National Botanical Garden. Vidubichi and collection of Lilac. Here, we see the downtown of the city of Kiev. This is a Krishatic street, Krishatic street, and this is a very interesting sculpture of lion or, or gepard, 
Jeep Art, yes, near the cafe in the center of Kiev, Kiev. in downtown of Kiev on Khrushchev Street, the most central street, just in front of a Besarabka food market. And this very old town, on the old Leofania, or Pirogova, Pirogova Architectural Museum with some flowers. Just I took this picture, wonderful, just before sunset. Wonderful time in the summertime in Pirogova, architectural, architectural and flora ethnographical museum. And it's here. This is again Maidan of Independence in the evening time with column of Lady Ukraine with just national flag on the left side and just very active movement on the Khrushchev Street in even in evening time. And here, this part of a Taras Shevchenko Park with Taras Shevchenko National University, the entrance of Taras Shevchenko University, where just many students just come in now. In this to the entrance, this was taken in summertime or in springtime. And here we are at St. Sophia Cathedral Square, and this is a view from St. Sophia Bell and St. Sophia Cathedral on the left part, on the right part. No, 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 that's right. This is St. Mike Cathedral. So the bell is a little bit smaller. St. Sophia Cathedral is bigger bell here at St. Michael Cathedral. And here are some flowers in the center of Kiev. Some flowers, sun, sunflowers with honeybees even in the city of Kiev. And from opposite the St. Michael Cathedral, this is St. Sophia Cathedral. With, and a quite high bell. And on the right side, this is just 1,500 years old St. Sophia Cathedral. And on front of on the square, this is a monument to, to Hetman Bogdan Khmelnytsky. And here are some cosmos flowers in, near my apartment where I'm living in Kiev, just to show the beauty of some regions of Kiev in the summertime. So you call it cosmos flowers. And here, this is just Bogdan and Khmelnytsky Street, just the way which I'm coming to the my institute from the Metro in, in Metro Teatrana. So this is straight away, just I'm coming from the metro station. Just to the National, Natural, National Museum of Natural History. And here, this is a view from my window at my job, just to Leonardo Center and to just skies in the summertime. And here, this is a cathedral, wonderful cathedral, St. Michael Cathedral, which was just ruined in 1977 and just restored in 1993, 1995 already in a time of independent Ukraine. And here, this is a monument of Ukrainian and Russian workers, the monument of friendship. But at the present time, this monument demolished, demolished, destroyed, because this is order of friendship is not existing anymore. So we are not believing so much in this kind of friendship, because this is all old, old Soviet styles. That's why the sculpture was demolished in this in the past year, 2021-22. And this is a small elephant on the bridge near the Dnieper River with a view to Podil region, with a view to river Dnieper and Podil region in the center of Kiev near this monument. And here the night, evening time view to Krishatik Street with a lot of cars and old restored buildings after the Second World War. And here just the view for autumn leaves, because here I've showed several seasons. Again, this is Archangel Michael, the guard, the Lord Protector of Ukraine and Lord Protector of Kiev City, just on this gate in the center on Maidan of Independence or the Square of Independence. Here, this is some winter time, Antonovich Street near the Tarashevchenko University and near Tarashevchenko Park in winter time. 
with a lot of snow. Some years ago in India, we didn't have too much snow like that. And this is a, between Christmas time and this on the left side, this is entrance to the National Museum of Natural History at Bagdan Khmelnytsky Street near Metro, near Metro Teatrana. So this is decoration of lights was done some years ago here. View to St. Michael Cathedral and monument to Ta Bogdan Khmelnytsky, monument to Getman, military leader of Ukrainian Cossacks and state Bogdan Khmelnytsky monument. And it was a time of a celebration of Christmas. Thank you for watching. I hope it was interesting and entertaining for you to see some videos to watch videos of insects and to remind you that I am in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, to remind you that Kyiv now in difficult situation because we have just war in Ukraine. But despite all these troubles, we have belief in our Ukrainian army, in our forces. And we could say Ukraine is forever. Don't forget to say about it. Ukraine is forever. And welcome to my channel to watch more videos about insects, about Ukraine, about Kyiv. And if you have interest in donations, so you can find some links about Patreon page. You can become just patron or donator or sponsor of the channel. Why not? It's a good idea. And next video is coming very soon. I hope so tomorrow if we have electricity and despite all troubles in a front line in the east and southeast, we must live, believe and work and continue our job as well. Because nobody didn't say we are not in blockade. We are not, not in a blockade. We are not in a siege. We are free. So Ukraine is fighting for freedom, independence, and the power. Good luck and see you soon. And Ukraine is forever. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Subscribe. Bye bye. See you soon on my channel. Write your comments. Best wishes for people who support Ukraine, for people who support Ukraine, who is with us. Good luck.